In this lesson, we'll learn how CAT's IKFK systems operate. Now, a CAT rig can seem misleading because it, at a quick glance, it looks like a, just a very standard rig. However, it's a very powerful one, and there's a lot built into this. One of the features I enjoy the most is IK and FK, how they work. We'll start with the, the arms and then we'll, we'll end with the spine because they behave two different ways. All right, so first with the arms, let's go ahead and take a look. And I'll make sure that we're under our local mode. If we were to switch over to our rotate tool, we can go ahead and use the local system here just to make it easier to, to rotate. All right, so we've seen this type of behavior before. This is just your, your standard FK behavior. Now, what's nice is that just as easily as we can uh, work with FK, we can also use IK simultaneously. However, as of right now, if we were to try to use IK, grabbing our palm and, and translating this around, right now we get this type of stretchy behavior. And that's simply because we're under setup mode. So this is what we'd expect in setup mode. We need to move our arm in place to match our, our, our character size. Now, if we were to go to our motion panel and enable animation mode, let's take a look at what's going to happen. The rig is actually going to collapse, and there are a few reasons why. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to setup mode. Now, the first reason is because we made a drastic change to our control rig. Remember, we created a brand new arm for this creature. And as a result, we need to make sure all of these changes have been updated and saved. In order to do that, that requires us to make a, a brand new animation layer. So that's one of the reasons. The next reason has to do with our motion node. Let's move to our our modify panel. So currently this is still enabled. I like to use this after animation has uh, pretty much been finished on the, the, the cat rig. And at that point we're then ready to use this for our, our game engine. But before that, I like to leave this disabled. So because of those changes, we got that type of weird behavior from our control rig. But now, if we were to go ahead and trash this old layer and recreate a new absolute layer, or what would be our base layer, now if we were to switch to animation mode, we'll notice that there are no more errors. All right, so again, that's just something to keep in mind when we make a, a drastic change like that. Just go ahead and recreate your animation layer. All right, but let's go ahead and take a look. If we were to grab our palm and start to move this around, now we are getting the IK behavior we'd expect. So this is really neat. And keep in mind, we're still under our FK system. That's how incredible this, this rig is. So what that means is we can go back to, let's say, our upper arm and rotate. There's no snaps at all. It's just a, a very smooth transition from one system to the next. Now, keep in mind that this changes when we are using an absolute IK mode. So let's go ahead and learn how to, to set that up. With our hand selected under our motion panel, right at the top, we'll find our IK properties. So notice here, this is where we create our IK target. Now, this tends to either be created right at the palm, or you may find it created at the origin of your scene. If this were ever offset, let's say if this were added to the origin, or let's say if this were anywhere in the scene, it's very easy to snap this back to the palm. It's just a matter of selecting the character's hand. And notice we have a tool here, Move IK Target to Palm, and it snaps right there. However, as we start to move this, you'll see that the IK arm is not moving. Well, why is that? It's simply because we're still in FK mode. So selecting our hand again, let's go ahead and take a look. If we were to scroll down, you'll see that we'll find our IKFK property right underneath. So I'll go ahead and set this to IK by setting this to a value of 0. Now you'll see that we get this very seamless blend back to that system, which is very cool.
Let's go ahead and start to uh, rotate this, this target object. You can see that the palm follows. And this is regulated by a palm target property. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'd access it by selecting our hand and scrolling to the very bottom of our rollout. If you don't quite like to work with the, the rollout uh, where it is currently at the bottom, feel free to move this wherever you'd like. You can always move this up. You can just go ahead and drag your, your window out here. You may want it right underneath your other IK properties, and you can most certainly do that. Just simply drag the, the rollout until it's, it's there. Let me go ahead and slide this back. All right, but this is what controls the wrist orientation when we're in absolute IK mode. If we were to set this to zero, you can see that now the IK goal hardly has any control over the orientation of the wrist, say for its uh, twist axis. And then we'll get this very weird behavior between the orientation of the palm and of our IK object. So what this means is that when we are using absolute IK, it's ideal that we are working with our target align mode set to a full weight of 100% or a value of 1. That way the hand will always stay planted. That's exactly what we'd want when using this mode. See how the hand will not shift at all. All right, so I wanted to point that out to you. We will be taking a closer look at IK and FK and how uh, we can animate between the, the two modes. We'll dedicate a, a lesson to that. But for right now, we'll go ahead and uh, end our uh, topic on uh, IK and FK for uh, the cat limbs here. And let's go ahead and talk about how we can do this for a cat spine. Now, keep in mind first that the... Head rig is also considered a, a spine rig. All right, so we'll learn about that when we go in and create our own custom rig. So keep in mind that what we're about to do here should be applied to both the spine and the head and neck rig. Let's go ahead and work with the spine. So you'll see that if we were to scroll to the top of our motion panel, we don't have access to any IKFK properties. So how can we set this up to have an, an FK type of control. Well, in order to do that, we'd move to our modify panel. Scrolling down, we'll find underneath the spine setup rollout, our spine control channels. So here's where we would uh, switch between IK, which is procedural, to FK. Now keep in mind, FK is slightly limited in that it doesn't work well with uh, the cat motion system. So remember that automatic walk cycle that we saw. It doesn't quite work well when we are using uh, that mode as well as retargeting. If you were to ever use the cat rig to retarget animation, again, it may not be ideal to work with an FK spine. And that, we actually get a warning when we switch over to that, letting us know that, all right, this is going to behave like an FK spine. However, there are currently a few limitations. This will probably be uh, addressed and and uh, updates to come for CAT. But for right now, I mean, it still works great. It's just something to keep in mind that if we're planning to use FK, we will use it to hand key animation. There's not going to be any procedural animation involved. But notice it works very well. We could go in and start to just kind of rotate the spine in place however we'd like. And if we would like to instead use an IK rig, well, it's just a matter of switching back over to procedural. Everything, again, will work as expected. So this is, uh, again, uh, really neat how flexible this rig is. So those are a few things I just wanted to point out to you about the IK FK system that is integrated into CAT. So later on, we'll take a look at how to animate between the two modes uh, when we're ready to animate the, uh, the arms, let's say, resting on a surface where we'd want them to stay. But, it, but before that, maybe we would want uh, an FK type of behavior. So we'll learn how to switch between the two. All right, but as of right now, that is it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start building our own 
custom rank. We're going to learn some uh, fun uh, topics as we go through that step on, on this tutorial.